Singapore's iconic Golden Mile complex is gazetted as a conserved building. Future developers uh, to get building incentives. Let's stay on that story and get more from uh, Professor Ho Pui Ping. He is the head of Department of Architecture at NUS as well as the UNESCO Chair on Architectural Heritage Conservation and Management in Asia. Professor, URA is allowing the site boundary of Golden Mile Complex to be extended to include part of the adjacent state land uh, for more design flexibility. How crucial is this for developers and, and what options does it open up? I think it is very crucial that the land adjacent to Golden Mile Center uh, to be given uh, to the developer to develop uh, so that the design of the new block, which might be 30 story high, uh, can take on different shapes or uh, allowing certain uh, setback, but also allowing a greater uh, land area uh, for development uh, so that the return from the land would be sufficient uh, as financial incentive for redeveloping uh, Golden Mile Complex. And Professor URA says this is part of an incentive package unique to a Golden Mile Complex. It's a conservation is the first of its kind. Why does this development deserve such a special treatment? No, I think the Golden Mile Complex uh, has many, many uh, good values. And in conservation, we talk about uh, the three main uh, values. So we call it a value-based uh, conservation approach. And uh, the first value would be the architecture value, the historical value, and the last would be the social value. I think uh, Golden Mile Complex uh, fulfilled the three values uh, very, very highly. Uh, uh, the architecture, I think, is really quite, very unique, uh, not only in Singapore, but also uh, in the world, uh, as a very good uh, example of mega structure of a uh, metabolist or even brutalist uh, architecture that has a mixed use uh, uh, development in it, meaning that it has. Uh, three components, uh, the shopping, the office, and the uh, uh, the residential. So it's almost like a single uh, uh, little city. And uh, historically, this is the first building and on, on, the, on the first land sale of the New Republic. Uh, it is supposed to be the first building along the Golden Mile, uh, the stretch of land that was reclaimed uh, uh, between uh, uh, Beach Road and Nico Highway. And this Golden Mile uh, really uh, would be used as a, new uh, CBD, uh, uh, apart from Shenton Way and the other uh, uh, CBDs uh, area uh, in Singapore. And uh, this was proposed by the uh, a team from uh, United Nations uh, uh, specialists who came to Singapore in the 1960s and uh, to see how Singapore can be developed as an international uh, hub of commerce and trade. And I think this is really very crucial in our national narrative that the uh, Golden Mile Complex exemplified this first building on the Golden Mile uh, in order for us to see uh, the development of the whole stretch uh, as a mini city, as a, uh, a CBD, and as a very uh, important uh, hub uh, for commerce. And uh, uh, it, it's going to be, uh, uh, was supposed to be a, a kind of shopping uh, and, and pedestrian street uh, in the sky, uh, uh, connecting many buildings. So this is the first building and it really revitalized the whole area of uh, of the beach uh, uh, which used to be shop houses and uh, maybe some slums along the way and socially i think that's uh, that's part of uh, what we see uh, as a witness of the development of uh, singapore uh, the society the community uh, uh, together with uh, the current uh, thai community uh, in that complex and therefore i think the uh, uniqueness of this particular building uh, give it a very high uh, conservation uh, significance and therefore, mm. the package of incentive given by the uh, URA is really to incentivize uh, developers uh, to take this on as a development project with the new build together with the uh, pro uh, preserved Golden Mile Complex uh, so that it can become a really a landmark and icon uh, of uh, uh, our city in the 21st century. Uh, that's that's uh, true, but will it also then raise the expectations of similar incentives for other developers <laughs> or developments with conserved buildings? And how challenging then will it be to ensure the fairness and the prudent use of public resources to incentivize developers? Uh, this is this is a very good uh, question, and this is why we approach the conservation 
uh, to this value-based uh, system. Uh, and in this system, uh, we are going to understand uh, the building uh, for its significance. And I think in this case, uh, Golden Mile probably uh, is unparalleled uh, in Singapore. Uh, the other mixed-use uh, structure title uh, development would be People's Park Complex, which was built uh, around the same time, uh, but also designed by the same uh, architecture uh, uh, firm, uh, Design Partnership. And I think uh, Golden Mile uh, has its own uh, character. I mean, uh, People's Park Complex might also have, but because of its tight site, and it's uh, really uh, very, very difficult to develop it, without uh, added incentive. Uh, and, and therefore, uh, it is uh, prudent uh, to see this as a very unique package uh, to balance the uh, economic uh, incentive, as well as uh, conservation of this very unique icon uh, in our republic's uh, history. And Professor, if we take a step back, what is uh, talk to us about the balance that needs to be achieved then between commercial interest and conservation, especially in land scarce Singapore? I think we need to take conservation very seriously. And uh, uh, in the past, uh, we've been looking at uh, colonial heritage and uh, we have a huge area of uh, maybe very many, uh, many areas of uh, shop houses and townhouses being uh, conserved. Uh, but I think we should now look at a really uh, important uh, modernist architecture such as uh, Golden Mile Complex and look at it uh, to see whether uh, we can find a way uh, to preserve the best, the most significant among the modernist architecture. Uh, currently, we have some uh, buildings uh, of that nature for example, the Singapore Conference Hall, uh, the uh, Jurong Town uh, Hall, uh, and maybe Zhongzhen High School uh, Auditorium uh, that were built between the 60s and 70s, exemplified the modernist uh, idea. And I think in this case, uh, this is a privately owned uh, Strata title property. Uh, and it is really very rare. And I congratulate URA and uh, salute URA for the uh, boldness in uh, going forward uh, to conserve this very, very uh, special architecture gem uh, in, in Singapore. And therefore, to balance commercial interest, I think we need to find ways uh, to help the uh, current owner uh, when they go on on-block sales uh, to incentivize the developers uh, to be able to take up this particular property. Uh, I know the land scarce uh, issues in Singapore is really very critical. And therefore, we need very, very good studies, as well as good articulations of the values uh, that we can see in some of these buildings and really bring our citizens together with us, uh, bring our community together with us so that we all recognize uh, the importance of some of these uh, icons. All right, thank you so much, Professor, for your insight this evening. Professor Ho Pui Ping, Head of Department of Architecture in US and UNESCO Chair on Architectural Heritage Conservation and Management in Asia.